Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll do some problems, few problems on the concept of average. On the concept of average. It's a very straightforward concept, it's a very simple concept, and yet this is our ninth, ninth, ninth video in the series of 10. It's a very simple concept, it's a very straightforward concept as I said, and yet there are ways that you can save a few seconds on the exam when you're given a straightforward problem instead of doing it in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an orthodox way, in an academic way. There are ways you can find shortcuts, that is, by looking at the problem in a more intuitive way and thereby saving yourself a few seconds. What we are about to say, what we are about to do is nothing earth shattering, but it will save you a few seconds in the exam. Here's a question. We are told that the mean score on four exam is 67. Mean score on four exam is 67. What most people do in this case is that they will take four exams with a mean score of 67. So that's your total on the four exam. And then we, they go on to tell us that we need an average of, what do we need on the fifth exam? What do we need on the fifth exam to get an average of 70? So let's pretend that the fifth exam we, we get a score of X. Therefore, the total number of tests that we have is 4 plus x, and this, this average has to equal to 70, we are told. And they sit there and solve this equation. There is nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. It's proper. It's appropriate. It is correct. But it is very time-consuming, and you are more prone to make mistakes. You are more likely to make mistakes. What's more, what's more, what's even more dangerous is that if you were to make a mistake doing it this way, and if you end up making one of the more one of the four most predictable mistakes, there are, there are four most popular predictable mistakes that they're looking for. If you end up making one of the four most popular mistakes in the exam, then among the five answer choices that they give you, remember these are all multiple choice exams that you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, or GRE, these are all multiple choice exams, and if you end up making one of the four most popular mistakes, your answer, whatever you come up with, will match one of the wrong answers and you will never know that you made a mistake because this is what they expect you to do. Let's take a look at it again, shall we? We are told that mean score on the four exam is 67. There is no simpler, easier, quicker, more efficient, more efficient way of making sure that you have a mean score of 67 on four exam than to simply make all of them 67. All of them 67. 67, 67, 67. Let's do it here. 67, 67, 67 and 67. So it's not crowded here. Then they go on to tell us that we want, we are going to take the fifth exam and we want our score to be 70. Let's make the fifth exam 70. Let's pretend that the fifth exam is 70. But that's not enough. Now you have to go back and ask yourself whether we have deficiency or surplus on each of the five, ex each of the four previous exams. Well, in this exam we had 67, we want an average of 70. We are three points short. We are three points short, we are three points short, we are three points short. We have to make up additional 12 points in addition to getting in addition to getting 70 on the fifth exam. We have to make additional 12 points to make up the deficiency of 12 points on the first four exam. That's it, we are done. The answer is 82. The answer is 82. We need to get 82. We need to get a score of 82 on the fourth exam in order to make sure. Uh, we, we need to get a score of 82 on the fifth exam rather. We need to get a score of 82 on the fifth exam to make sure that our overall average comes out to be 70, given the fact that we only scored 67 points each of the previous four exams. Even though we did not score exactly 67 each of the previous four exams, we're pretending. That's the easiest way to make to make sure that the average of those four comes out to be 67. And then you look for the then you look for the deficiency and surpluses. That's all. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. My score, I scored 67, or rather, 62, 76, and 80 on three tests, on three tests. I took three tests and that was my score. I need an average of 75 on four tests. 
Now you understand, I'm just on the blackboard. What I'm putting on the blackboard is just the gist of the problem. It's simply the nub of the problem. Of course, in the real exam, the problem, they're going to make it more elaborate and it's going to be more verbose. You understand? But this is, this is essentially the nub of the problem. In the exam, they tend to make it a little bit more verbose to come across a little bit more intimidating. That's all. That's what it is. But that's what it is. So here are the, here are the scores. 62, 76, 80. And here's my fourth exam. I want an overall score of 75. Well, I don't have 75 in the first exam. I only scored 62. I have to make up the difference. How many points am I short if I want 75? I'm 13 points short. I have to make up 13 extra points here. 76, well, I need an average of 75. I have a, 70, I have a surplus. I have a surplus of one point. Here also we have a surplus of five points. Negative five and a negative one is negative six. Negative six and a positive 13 it's going to be positive 7. It's going to be positive 7. We are done. We need to make up 7 extra points, which means we need to score 82 points. We need to score 82 points on the fourth exam to make sure that we get an overall score, overall average of 75 points on these four exams. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Before we get to the next question and before I forget and, and I end up inadvertently erasing these words, let's learn these words. Let's learn these words. We learned them in our vocabulary lessons. We just want to review them so that we understand and refresh our memory. This is something vocab day 11. Whichever test that you're preparing for, it doesn't matter whether you're preparing for ACT, SAT, TS, GMAT or GRE, just type in GRE vocabulary words or SAT vocabulary words day 11 and you will watch the video where, you, where we learn the word NUB. What is NUB? N-U-B NUB. What does NUB mean? NUB means exactly what we, what we said a little while ago. It means the gist of something, the essence, the core, the main idea, the central idea, the theme of the whole thing. The problem, as I wrote on the blackboard, is not how it's going to appear on the exam. It's going to be a little bit more verbose. It's going to be a little bit more wordy. This is simply the nub of the problem. This is the gist of the problem. And of course, verbose we learned also a long time ago. What does verbose mean? Of course, you know what it means. And when did we learn the word verbose? We learned it on day number 16. Day 16. Again, just type in GRE vocabulary words. The test of the exam that you're preparing for, GRE vocabulary words, day 16, it will pop right up, verbose, which means wordy. Here, I'm just putting the gist of it, the nub of it. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. I scored. I scored 65, 73, 81, and 82 on four tests. I need an average of 80 on the five exams that, 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 that I will have in the course. There are going to be five exams. The very fifth exam, the very last exam that is coming up, the fifth exam that is coming up, the very last exam that is coming up, I want to know what I need to score, what I need in order to have an average of 80, given the fact that I scored 65, 73, 81, and 82. Well, I want an average of 80 on the fifth exam. So let's see what happens. How much surplus is, how much deficit we have. Here we have 65. We need an average of 80. We are 15 points short. We are 15 points short. We have a 15 point deficiency from our target of 80. We need to make up those 15 points. We need to earn those 15 points. Here, our, our target is 80, we only have 73, we need to earn 7 more points to make up for deficiency in the second exam. Here we have a surplus, and here we have a surplus of 2 points. That's it, we're done. Negative 2 and negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 and a, and, and a 7 is going to be 4. 4 plus 15 is going to be 19. So we need to add 19 points to it. 80 plus 19 looks like we need a almost, almost a perfect score. Almost a perfect score, 99 out of 100, assuming that it is out of 100, uh, in order to ensure that we have an average score of 80 on these five exams. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. We are told that the average of 15, 
20 and 40 is 5 more than the average of 10, 30 and x. Question is, question is how much is x? Well, let's find out, shall we? Again, we can do it in a traditional way, we're not going to do it in, a, in an academic way. Here's what's going on. We have these three numbers here, 15, 20 and 40 and then we have these three numbers, 10, 30 and x. 10, 30 and x. Okay, keep listening. We know that the average of these three numbers, we are told, is 5 more. The average of these three numbers is 5 more than the average of these numbers. The average of 15, 20 and 40 is 5 more than the average of 10, 30 and x. Which means that if we were to subtract 5 from each of these numbers, make it 10, make it 15 and make it 35, then the average of these five numbers, or average of these three numbers, is exactly equal to the average of these three numbers. Well, if the average of these three numbers is equal to the average of these three numbers, which means their sum of these three numbers is equal to sum of those three numbers. Are you with me? Of course, in the real exam, I wouldn't be wasting my time writing down equal sign and plus sign and so forth. Anyway, so there we go. We have a 30 here, we have a 35 here. Let's subtract 30 from both sides. 35 becomes 5. We have a 10 here, we have a 15 here. Subtract 10 from both sides. 15 becomes 5. And voila, our x is equal to 5 plus 5 plus 10. It is 20. It is 20. Do you understand? That's what it is. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.